Chapter 15. Gravity Annihilated. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances, and art found wanting. Daniel, chapter 5. We are now exactly at the middle point, where Earth and Mars mutually balance each other, and their respective attractions are neutralized, said Asterion. At, that, at this point, all gravity ceases to exist. There is no such thing as weight, weight here. He then placed a ten-pound weight on a pair of spring scales affixed to the wall. They did not move. Could a hundred million earth ether volts be placed on a pair of great scales outside? They would not turn the balance a single hair, said he. Then a, weight, then a mountain weighs no more than a grain of sand, said the doctor. Neither of them weigh anything. Asterion held up a few books, papers, maps, etc., high above the table, then let go. They remained motionless, poised in the air. Although I quite understood the scientist scientific theory of non-gravitation, I was nonetheless surprised at this practical illustration of it. We threw up our pocket knives, coins, handkerchiefs, feathers, cotton, small pebbles, all floated, floated around for a moment, then hung motionless. Captain Fred, whispered John mysteriously in my ear, witness what witches around here. Look somewhat like it, looks somewhat like it, although they have traveled a long way from Witchland, I replied. Hi, witches can fly a long way up, heap up way in the sky on broomsticks. As everything, as everything weighs nothing up here, remarked the prince, our bodies must almost be, be almost as ethereal as our spirits. So they are, said the doctor. I begin to feel the etherealization already. How do you like the sensation? asked Asterion. It is delightful. I feel as if I were in Elysium. How is it with respect to yourself, Lieutenant? My feeling coincides with the doctor's. And you, John? Me feel if I could not fly like a little bird. And how would you like it? How would you like a still higher elevation? asked the prince. Oh, me want go way up high. And you, doctor? I should enjoy a higher elevation immensely. And you, Frederick? I agree with the doctor and John, in toto. Your aspirations shall be gratified, replied the prince, as taking, as taking us by the coat collars with his thumb and finger, he lightly lifted us high over the table, where we hung suspended, sprawling our legs and arms amongst the books, papers, etc., like a trio of dancing jacks. Your Highness has illustrated the higher elevation in quite an original and striking manner, said the doctor. I hope you enjoy it all the more, replied Altifora. Hi, giggled John. Me feel lively as a hop toad. Reckon could jump to the moon. As, as you could, if you had nothing else to jump from, said Asterion. Prince, I must confess I don't feel quite as comfortable up here as I expected, remarked the doctor. Uh, really, I am so sorry you are so, really, I am so sorry you are so disappointed, replied he. In fact, it is becoming rather irksome. Well then, why don't you come down? I find it quite impossible to do so, vainly trying to hook his foot in the arm of chair. Jump down, suggested Asterion. Which way shall I jump? There's no upward nor down, nor top nor bottom, right nor left, forward nor backwards, in these novel gravitational regions. Besides, I have no foundation to jump from. I deeply sympathize with you in your unfortunate situation, said the prince, rising from his chair. I may as well enjoy the sympathy of your highness company in the meantime, replied the doctor as reaching down. He took the prince by the, co the coat collar and pulled him up, but lost his balance in the effort and turned a complete somersault and hung with his head downwards and his heels upward. Good doctor, laughed the prince. You have made a total change of base and can dive straight, straight down to your chair. But I shall have a rush of blood to the head and die of op apoplexy before I get there. No danger, said Vidyu. The blood weighs nothing and cir circulates as freely through the lower extremities as the upper. If you will kindly inform me which are my upper and which are my lower extremities in this position, I shall be much obliged to you. The question is a poser, I'll admit, he replied, rising from his chair. Perhaps we can solve it better up here, said the doctor, reaching down and pulling him up alongside him. The more counselors, the merrier, Vidyu 
catching Blurass by the coattails, pulling him up, and there we six hung, helpless as beetles on their backs, sprawled our arms and legs about, and shouting with laughter, while the raven flapped his wings and hurrahed himself hoarse. Well, gentlemen, said the prince, here we are, all balanced, like earth and Mars, head to tail. Yes, you've got yourself into a pretty fix, said Asterion. How so? asked the prince. Because you can't get out of it. Is that a fact? It is indeed. But you can help us out when you get when we get tired of the fact of the fact. I regret to say, I may not be able to help you out. Reach up your hand and pull us down. I am afraid to risk it. I cannot pull you six down here, but you six could easily pull me up there. You would rather then be in a worse fix than you are now. Well then, start the car out of this non-gravitation place, and we'll all float down. I cannot start the car alone. I need Boris and Vidian's help, and you've got them up, up there. <laughs> We're all rather an awkward fix, said I. Damned of a fix, croaked. Damned of a fix, croaked the Commodore. You're both quite mistaken, continued Asterion. Nothing is fixed in nature. Everything is in motion. Atoms, molecules, bodies, all. After a while, our car will begin to revolve an orbit of its own around the sun. As a new asteroid or baby planet to be the observed to be the observed of all the observers in the astron astronomical world, said the prince. And inhabited also, said I. And locked up inside, the other planets will swear a floating jail has come, come among them, said the doctor. And like all celestial bodies, continued Asterion, our car will begin to revolve on its axis, and each of you will revolve on your own individual axis, and around each other at the same time. It will be quite a lively waltz, and I believe the doctor is morally and religiously opposed to waltzing. So I am, replied the doctor empathetically. Prince, see what a ridiculous predicament you have placed yourself and all of us in, with your mischievous prank. A sedate, dignified old gentleman like myself, whirling around on my ta axis. The car has started in her orbit already, and is beginning to revolve on her axis, said Asterion, consulting his instruments. And we are also beginning to revolve on our axes, individually and collectively, exclaimed the doctor. Gentlemen, said the prince, the ball has opened. Take your positions for the waltz. And I sincerely hope you will enjoy it, said Asterion, composing himself in his chair and consulting his book on astronomical logarithms. <laughs>